I'm Daniel. I'm Richard. I'm Brian. And I'm Sarah. This video is about momentum and impulse. In this video, we will demonstrate different types of collisions, including elastic, inelastic, and perfectly inelastic. We will also be going over conservation of momentum and energy. Impulse and the impulse momentum theorem. And finally, we will be doing some sample problems to finish. Momentum is a measure of how hard it is to stop an object. Uh, momentum is a vector quantity. It is represented by the letter P. Momentum can be measured in kilogram meters per second or newton seconds. The equation for momentum is P equals mv or momentum equals mass times velocity. And greater mass or greater speed yields greater momentum. Momentum is conserved in an isolated system. Total momentum in the system is constant. This is represented by the equation P initial equals P final, meaning the total initial momentum in a system equals the final total momentum in the system after the collision. Change of momentum is classified as impulse, which is represented by the letter J. J equals delta P, meaning that J, which stands for impulse, is equal to the change in momentum. Impulse occurs when unbalanced force acts on an object for a period of time, and impulse is also the area under the force time graph. The impulse momentum theorem states that J equals delta P equals F times delta T. This is derived from the equation that J equals L delta P equals delta MV, and therefore J equals M times delta V times delta T divided by delta T. And since delta V divided by delta T is equal to acceleration, J equals MA times delta T. And since, according to the second law, F equals M times A, therefore J equals F times delta T. In this demonstration, we have a clay ball and tennis ball being thrown at the door at the same mass and velocity. The tennis ball hits the door and rebounds, leading in a greater change in velocity, which then leads to a greater impulse on the door, while the clay ball hits the door and sticks. This leads to a lower change in velocity compared to the tennis ball and an overall lower impulse on the door. There are three types of collisions, perfectly inelastic, perfectly elastic, and inelastic. Perfectly inelastic collisions occur when energy is lost before and after the collision. They're usually sticky collisions. Perfectly elastic collisions occur when energy is conserved before and after the collision. They're usually bouncy collisions. Inelastic collisions are a combination of both. They're kind of bouncy, but some energy is lost. In this example of a perfectly elastic collision with two carts of equal mass, all of the momentum of the red cart is transferred to the blue cart. Therefore, the blue cart's final velocity is equal to the red cart's initial velocity. In an inelastic collision, some of the kinetic energy is lost after the collision. The final velocity of the red cart is higher than the final velocity of the red cart in the previous video while the final velocity of the blue cart is less than the final velocity of the blue cart in the previous video. In this perfectly inelastic collision, two carts of equal mass, the red cart strikes the blue cart, and both carts stick together and keep moving, and the final velocity of the carts combined is half of the initial velocity of the red cart. In this variation of a perfectly inelastic collision, two cars of equal mass collide with equal velocity from opposite directions, so all kinetic energy is lost. In this example, we shot a dart which hit a pendulum. And through the equations that we are showing, we will explain to you how we calculated the final velocity of the <coughs> pendulum. The equation is P initial equals P final, which means that the mass of the dart times the initial velocity of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum times the initial velocity of the pendulum equals the mass of the dart times the final velocity of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum versus the final velocity of the pendulum. The mass of the dart is 0 0.003 kilograms. The mass of the pendulum is 0 0.125 kilograms. The initial velocity of the dart is 14.6 meters per second. The final velocity of the dart is negative 4.87 meters per second. The initial velocity of the pendulum is zero, and the final velocity of the pendulum is x, meaning what we're solving for. And after we plug that all into the equation, we, we solve for x. And x turns out to be 0 0.46728 meters per second.